all my anxiety has been put to rest from a stunning, stunning eclipse this morning coming up over that uh, over that inversion layer. Just I couldn't be I couldn't be happier. it is welcome to uh, behind the door I'm Kevin O'Donnell and uh, today we're down at a beach down by the Sturgeon Bay shipping canal coming up on June 10th is an annual eclipse where the moon is in a new phase it's going to pass directly in front of the Sun right at sunrise so that's just four days from now I came down to this beach to make final preparations for uh, how I want to shoot this, get my focal length on my lens, get my place where I need to set up. And uh, you saw me kind of milling around earlier here when I first got here looking at my photo pills app uh, to determine exactly where it is uh, I need to be. So I've gone through the planner stages and I'll show you that in a bit. I'm just down here making final arrangements because I don't want to be rushed on the day of the eclipse. Now from where we are here at about almost 45 north latitude it isn't going to be a total eclipse the moon isn't going to pass directly in front of the sun we're only going to catch about maybe a half maybe 40 percent of it but what i want to do is i want to get that sun rise and the moon uh, passing in front of the sun directly on the sturgeon bay North Pier Light Lighthouse. So this has taken quite a bit of planning, <clears throat> uh, particularly on my photo pills app. And uh, I'll walk through kind of how I plan this with you and then come back out here on Thursday, weather permitting. Currently they're calling for clear skies to the horizon. But uh, that could change, especially given the drastic change in temperature between the land and the water. So the first thing I had to do is determine where to stand. <clears throat> and that's where the red pin is here. Now, problem being, <laughs> I don't have a great signal here. 
Uh, I keep dropping the signal, but I have to put this blue pin directly onto the red pin. The blue pin shows where I'm currently at, and the red pin is from where I want to shoot to get the exact alignment that I, that I need, or that I want to get. So the next thing I need to determine is, what lens do I want to use? Well, the longer the focal length of lens, the larger the sun and the moon are going to appear in the photo. They're going to take up more of the actual field of view. So I want it to look really big. Now, we are 3,084 feet from that lighthouse, according to photo pills. And I can determine this by setting a black pin on top of the lighthouse here. See that black pin? I'm going to move this over here so you can see. That's right on top of the tower of the lighthouse. What I want to capture is that sun coming up over the top of the lighthouse. And you see the, the blue thick line here that's overlapping the yellow line? The blue line is the moon. And the yellow line is the sun. So I know, for example, that this lighthouse is 39 feet from front to back, as I looked it up. And it's uh, 39 feet high. So I want the sun to be not clearing the tower, but kind of behind it. I want the tower in the foreground. So I don't want the sun any higher than 39 feet. So if I look to when and see when the sun is at 39 feet from where I'm standing above the, uh, above the horizon here, uh, it shows me here at 5.12 a.m. it's at 48 feet. So at 5.10 a.m. it's at 39 feet at 5.10 a.m. So I need to be standing here at 5.10 a.m. Focused, ready to go in order to catch that, catch that moon and sun. Moon overlapping the sun directly behind the tower of the lighthouse. Now, what focal length do I use? So here's the thing. Uh, this light here is a channel marker light, and I don't want that in the photo. You see it here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to have to zoom in. Now, I'm using a 100 to 400 uh, telephoto lens with a 2x teleconverter. So essentially, it's 200 to 800. But if I zoom into 800, it's too close. But if I zoom into 700, and you can see here, my camera is a Canon 5D Mark IV. My lens is, I got a 2x teleconverter on there, and it'll do the calculations for me to show me not only my field of view, but also my depth of field, which is gonna be really important. So a 2x teleconverter, I set that lens on 350 millimeters. It's actually gonna be 700 millimeters. And what that does is that shows me a field of view here between these lines. But you can see it's in the center between that kind of a bluish gray line there. You see the white lines on the top and the bottom. That's my field of view. Now as for my depth of field, <laughs> I want both the lighthouse tower and the sun and the moon to be in focus. So what I have to do is I have to make sure that my hyperfocal distance, in other words, the, the point at which from then on out to infinity is going to be in focus, I have to make sure that that hyperfocal distance is on this side of the lighthouse so that everything beyond that is going to be in focus. And that's what I've done here. This is my minimum focus distance here, 1,338 feet. Anything in front of that is going to be out of focus. I don't care about anything that's in front of that. I put my actual focus on the top of the tower. That's my focus pin. It's 3,084 feet from where we're standing. But you see this line here? This is my hyperfocal distance, 2,366 feet. So anything beyond that blue line to the right of that blue line is going to be in focus. So everything is going to be in focus. That's about it.
The only thing to do now is uh, make sure I'm out here about an hour before sunrise, get everything set up. Hopefully we have a clear sky and uh, we can capture this uh, annular eclipse. So, fingers crossed everyone. It's been three days since uh, we were down at the beach and uh, I keep checking all my weather sources <laughs> uh, every day, several times a day um, for tomorrow morning's uh, shoot for the eclipse. And uh, I'm really, really excited about it. I haven't been sleeping well. I have everything packed up, ready to go, all my gear set to go, ready to get up at three o'clock tomorrow morning, head out there, be out there at least an hour ahead of time. But I keep checking my apps. The first app that I have up here is um, called Dark Sky. I use this one a lot. And you can see here that in Sturgeon Bay at 5 a.m. they're expecting between 44 and 61 percent cloud cover. Not good. Another app that I use is called the International Clear Sky Chart. And this is actually uh, used by Astronomers, uh, we have an observatory, the Leif Everson Observatory here in Sturgeon Bay. And uh, although it says the dark blue there on that top line, it says it's going to be clear of cloud cover. You look at the next uh, row down and you see the light blue for transparency. Yeah, that generally means fog. <laughs> so that isn't looking good. Uh, next we have... Uh, an app uh, called Clear Outside, which I absolutely love. I find this one to be the most accurate, actually. If I scroll over to Thursday at uh, five o'clock in the morning, total cloud cover between 88 and 99% between five and 6 a.m. And you see that that cloud cover is low cloud cover here, which is absolutely the worst kind of cloud cover. Um, if they're low, it's gonna be along the horizon. They're generally pretty thick. And that's exactly what we don't need. And uh, finally, Meteor Earth. And this one uh, kind of gives a graphic of what the, the cloud cover is going to look like. I'll turn this back to around 5, 10 a.m. Yeah. 5.05 a.m. anyway. Yeah. Um could be set up my, setting myself up for a big disappointment. I've actually been editing uh, the video from the shoot that I did on Sunday, the front part of this, and then I was gonna add what we do tomorrow onto the back end of this and hopefully get it out within a few days. But it may all be for naught. And the only way we're gonna find out is when we head down to the beach in the morning. So until then, guys, I, uh, I'll just check in with you at around 4.15 tomorrow. All right. Foggier and foggier by the minute. <clears throat> Clear sky, but I don't know. Can you sense my disappointment? <laughs> oh. It hasn't come all the way into shore. 
but certainly the uh, North Pier headlight is enshrouded in fog. So this is an inversion layer because of the temperature differential that you know we talked about the other day. And it's probably not going to burn off. It's going to get worse as the day goes on. It might lift a couple of times and then come back down, but uh, when the weather has been the way it's been, this is kind of typical. So nice and calm, that's for sure. Uh, which actually doesn't help <laughs> blow the fog away. So whether or not this is going to obscure the sun rising, uh, you know, and the uh, and the partial eclipse yet to be seen. So we still have, I don't know, twenty-three minutes. It's four forty right now, but twenty-three minutes before that sun comes up. So we'll see. All of the charter boats are going out now. There's one after another going out. No, it's in that fog. You can see it coming up from the mouth of the canal. There's something wrong or amiss with the settings on this photo close app because it shows nearly a total eclipse here and that the moon is not rising until 524. That's not right. I should probably do a calendar this thing. Well, you can't see the lighthouse beacon at all now. <clears throat> okay, well, it's underway, <laughs> but we can't quite see the sun yet. The uh, fog out over the lake is too thick, but I'm using my uh, Osmo action here because you can see I have I have both my cameras set up. Here we go. Uh, taking time lapses. So they're shooting every three seconds. That's a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I have it set to uh, 200 mil. And you know the settings for this one. Shooting at f11 at uh, about 300 um, millimeters and 600 millimeters really because I have that 2x teleconverter on there. The problem with putting that teleconverter on is that uh, you lose uh, two stops of light so and the widest it will open to is F11 anyway. Ah, there comes the sun now. And I have my eclipse glasses to put on. We're just going to let this roll. because I got some, I think I got some really awesome shots anyway. So, and I'm just standing here now. It's, it's nearly over. I mean, the sun is still covered by the moon by about maybe 15, 20%, but it's so high in the sky right now that uh, it's really kind of out of the frame and, and getting very bright off the water now too. So, but the dark moody stuff, uh, I just keep taking shots here of this lighthouse kind of enshrouded in fog with the early morning light hitting it and it's just, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Have a look and until next time, take care of yourselves. Stay safe 
and I'll see you down the road. Thanks everyone.